So it seems like there are two types of people who get into solar. Those that want it for emergency backup power and those that want to reduce their power bill. Let's talk about that a little bit. This is I from Ask Out Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. You know, we don't need it all complicated, but let's jump right into it. I talked to a lot of people when I was trying to get into solar and getting an understanding, watching like Will Prowse and Hobotech and so on and so forth. A lot of people who are heavily into solar, heavily, you know, whatever. A lot of people who are into solar, they don't know how much their electricity costs. And I'm just like, wait, what? You got to know how much your electricity costs if you're in the camp of trying to save money on your bill. Now, I hate to break this to you. I have a saying in my videos where this stuff saves me pennies, but they're my pennies. It's literally pennies, guys. <sighs> that saddens me a lot, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I got into solar because I'm into having power when the electricity goes out and I'm also into reducing my bill. I'm all about like these micro transactions that save you money and so on and so forth. But you got to know how much your electricity costs. So I'll give you an example for me. I thought for the longest time that my electricity was seven cents per kilowatt. Kilowatt is 1000 watts. You think about that for a second because that's a whole nother conversation. Like I'll, I'll, I'll circle back to that. I then found out that my power provider charges me around seven cents and then my electric company charges me around seven to eight cents to deliver the power to me, you know, like the lines and the box and all sorts of jazz. So my electricity costs about 14 cents. Imagine me in my mind thinking my electricity costs seven cents a kilowatt and trying to justify a solar purchase. It was just, it was tough. I had to like basically, that's why when I saw that 100 watt panel, for twenty dollars, I was like, "Yo, go get that because that's a much lower um, investment to get in the solar." And that's why I got the Bowdens for like a hundred some odd dollars because it was about emergency power. It wasn't necessarily a purchase that made sense to save me money, which is what I'm all about. I'm about preparedness and power going out, but I want to save me some money. So I, I made these small micro purchases because it wouldn't take as long to recoup that money because my energy was so cheap. So then I found out my energy is like actually double. It's still only 14 cents. Let me try and put this into perspective for you. The EB70 soars 716 watt hours of battery. That device cost $500. If 14 cents is what you pay for a thousand watts, it's probably like about 10 cents of power stored in that device. That puts things into perspective for you, I hope. Is it worth doing? Absolutely. <laughs> but it ain't saving you a whole lot of money. Let's just throw that right out of the window. It is not saving you a whole lot of money. Now, in my mind, I tried to make this math work over and over. I was looking at DIY solutions because they could have possibly been cheaper. But no matter how you cut it, it takes years for you to get your money back after you invest into solar. It's just the truth of the matter. If you're paying a dollar per watt, and in some instances, you're paying 60 cents per watt, 70 cents per watt, you can get a thousand of them for less than 30 cents. Even if your electricity is super high, I think Hawaii has like some of the highest electricity costs, but the average electricity cost for most people is like about 12 cents per kilowatt. 12 cents per thousand watts. This has kind of like messed things up for me every every now and then because I think like, is it worth the wear that I'm putting on my battery to avoid plugging stuff into the wall? I know that's kind of controversial, <laughs> but it's something I think about and I can only be me in, in these videos. It's like, man, should I just plug my cell phone into the wall? Sheesh, you know what I mean? But to put that into perspective, when you go to a business, just a little levity, when you go to a business and they say you can't charge your cell phone, it's like literally your cell phone costs about, it costs less than a dollar to charge your cell phone 24 hours a day for a month. That thing uses no power. 30 watts on a high end, 10 watts on most phones. It's like, dude, let me just give you a dollar and charge my phone. I could give you a quarter and charge my phone and you would still be making a profit. That's how cheap electricity is. So if you're in it to save money, do you? Because one thing that I, I leave out of this, 
is that getting into solar changes your mindset. You become more usage aware as well. So that's another way you can bring your electricity down because you don't leave stuff plugged in. You don't run things all the time. You're mindful of the things that you're running. You know what I mean? My TV, so my TV plugged in. We live a very like low, how should I say this? Uh, we don't have a lot of stuff in our home. Like even though I'm a, I'm a techie guy, I'm in IT, I'm into all the fancy fly stuff, but I'm not like some other people who are into like the gadgets in the home theater. Like right over here on my TV is we literally have a TV that has a Roku built into it and a modem. We don't have no cable boxes. We don't have cable. We, we, we like we have a very low power footprint. That's why it's very important to do your research to get good prices on things because if you're just going into it for the power saving, that's a that's a, a long term investment. Solar, I've done the math in my head, depending on high or low your electricity is, it takes about four to seven years to recoup that purchase. You look at a 100 watt panel and how much power that can put out during the day at about five hours of great sunlight, which still won't get you 100 watts. But let's just say it got you 100 watts, 500 watts of power. That's half a kilowatt. At 15 cents a kilowatt, that gives you about seven cents a day. You spent a hundred dollars on that panel, seven cents a day. Every day is not sunny. Every day doesn't give you the 100 watts. You will rarely get the 100 watts, but just for the sake of simplicity, you think about how long it'll take you to use those panels to start recouping your money. The good thing about rigid panels is they last you for, they're rated to last you for two decades. So. It's still a good investment, but I'm just saying if you get into it to save money in the immediate, that's a little bit of a tougher sale, even with getting solar panels on your roof. I mean, yeah, it saves you some money, but you spent a lot of money to save that money. Bonus thought. I got a question for you. So it's like if you do lose electricity, the question you have to ask yourself is how valuable is that electricity to you when you lose power? I'm thinking about like two times or three times. So that kind of like makes me feel a little bit better about spending the money because if I'm at 14 cents, then that money is going to be worth at least I'm about to struggle with math. <laughs> Who is 14 plus 14? 28. If you stack on top of that again, 14, 14, 14, that's what? 42. If your power is out, you could say your power is worth about 28 cents to you or 48 cents to you. I mean, it's however you play it in your head. But power doing an outage is, I mean, it's invaluable. But yeah, we're going to leave it right there. It's out of power.